Hello guys, in this video we are going to move forward with our discussion on kinematics which we had halted for uh, past few videos. Uh, we had not uh, discussed kinematics but we have to move forward with uh, dynamics and electrodynamics but now we are going to return back to our discussion of kinematics. And the next topic which we are going to discuss in kinematics is of the plane polar coordinates coordinates yeah so, so to understand what plane polar coordinates are first we need to uh, draw our coordinate system right our cartesian coordinate system this is the x axis this is the y axis right and the, the position vector of uh, any point in space would be let's say this point is p would be given by its position vector r right now let's say this position vector is making an angle theta with respect to the x axis then this component is obviously r cos theta right and this distance over here is equal to r sin theta and from our previous videos, we know that uh, the vector r can now be written as its component in the x direction times the x step vector plus its component in the y direction times its y cap vector, right? And uh, hence its uh, magnitude would become uh, equal to the magnitude of r is just this r which is equal to uh, let's say uh, r cos theta is equal to x and r sin theta is equal to y then it will be equal to on the root of x square plus y square okay and what is theta so theta from over here you can easily see that if this is r sin theta then this distance is also r sin theta or which is equal to y we have called right so you can easily see now that tan theta is equal to r sin theta or y divided by x which implies theta is equal to arctan of y by x okay arctan is nothing but sometimes it's it is also called tan inverse, right? the inverse of the tangent function. So this new coordinate, this vector, position vector r, along with this theta vector, can itself, now theta is a vector, okay? It is not just an angle, but it has a direction associated with it, which I have taken from the x-axis. I could have taken theta this from the y-axis also, but I've taken it from the x-axis, and hence it has a certain direction. Now we can draw a unit vectors along this r cap r direction and call it r cap, right? And we can draw a unit vector perpendicular to this, right? And this is as you can see easily in the theta direction. So we call it theta cap. Now why perpendicular? Perpendicular because uh, here you have seen how I've taken uh, the component of r along the x and y axis it would not have been possible to take the component if this angle between r and x is 90 degrees because then cos theta would become zero cos of 90 is zero right so the r would not have a component in the x direction and that's why y is perpendicular to x y does not have a component in the x direction in the same manner, we have drawn two unit vectors, r cap and theta cap, both perpendicular so that they don't have components with each other. That means theta cap does not have a component in the r cap direction, and r cap does not have a component in the theta cap direction. Right? Only these kind of vectors form a basis because any other vector we can represent in terms of its component in this r cap and theta cap direction now. 
okay but we would not want r cap and theta cap itself to depend upon each other because then it, they just do not form a basis now both r cap and theta cap depend upon its uh, depend upon theta how uh, let's say you have r cap you have a circle right consider a circle then this is the position vector basically we are considering a particle moving along the circle so its particles position is changing like this it has velocity like this along the tangent to the circle every time so that it keeps moving along the circle right so this is the r so you will see that r is constant everywhere but what is changing is theta right and r cap is also changing first r cap was in in this direction and r cap is in this direction but the magnitude of r is constant because the radius of the circle is constant right so the magnitude of r is constant but what is changing is theta so and theta cap is obviously depending upon theta right like this theta cap is equal to theta vector divided by its magnitude right so theta cap is obviously depending upon theta so both r cap as well as theta cap are actually functions of theta right they both change with theta and how they change with theta for that consider the x cap and y cap vector and also the minus x cap vector why did i consider the minus x cap vector you're going to discover soon okay so if this angle is theta that means this angle is also theta by the properties of angles and this angle is also theta so now what we are going to do is we are going to take the components of r cap in the x cap and y cap direction and also that of theta cap in the x cap and y cap direction i'm going to represent these in terms of the cartesian basically you are transforming you are changing your coordinate system from cartesian to the polar coordinate system and how do we do that we are going to find out now so we get r cap is equal to now the magnitude of r cap is 1 so actually it is magnitude of r cap into cos theta right its component in the x direction x cap direction so but the magnitude of r cap is 1 so we just get cos theta x cap plus sin theta y cap from here right this is r cap cos theta and its components we can take in the y cap direction also similar to how we took uh, the components of r in the x and y direction and same we are going to do with theta cap now okay so you can see that theta cap's component the cos theta component will be along the y cap direction whereas its sin theta component will be along the minus x cap direction so it is going to give so we will get theta cap is equal to minus sin theta x cap which means we have taken actually sin theta of minus x cap its component in the minus x direction plus cos theta y cap okay now one thing which makes this vectors different from the cartesian coordinate system as we are going to soon see is that you can see these are theta dependent as i have already told you and what the particle if it moves in a circle as i have told you the theta changes with time and if these vectors depend upon theta that means those vectors will also change with time and uh, hence these unit vectors in the polar coordinate system are time independent whereas the part, the vectors x cap y cap and z cap from our cartesian coordinate system as we have already discussed in our previous video are time independent and space independent they are same everywhere in space and in time so when we had taken derivative of these vectors we had seen that the derivative was the So now next we are going to discover what the derivative of these vectors are so we have to find dr cap upon dt what is it right so dr cap upon dt is equal to d by dt and what is r cap r cap is equal to cos theta x cap plus sin theta y cap right 
so now as i've told you x cap and y cap are time independent so they will just come out of the derivative when differentiation of cos is minus sin theta right plus cos theta y cap similarly differentiation of sin theta is cos theta and y cap is constant with respect to time so we get this now you can see what minus sin theta x cap plus cos theta y cap is it is just theta cap vector and multiply it to this, you will get d theta by dt because of chain rule discussed in a previous video. So first you differentiate cos theta and then you differentiate theta and uh, multiply it to the derivatives, right? So this was the chain rule. Now we can see easily see that minus sine theta x cap plus cos theta y cap is equal to the theta cap vector. So we get d theta upon dt theta cap, which is in Newton's notation theta dot theta cap is equal to r r cap dot. Right. So the time derivative of r cap is nothing but theta dot theta cap. So you see the time derivative of the r cap vector is not equal to zero unlike our unit vectors from the Cartesian coordinate system. Next, similarly, we are going to look into the derivative of theta cap. So theta cap dot is equal to d theta cap upon dt. So that is equal to d by dt of minus sine theta from this expression. So we get minus sine theta x cap plus cos theta y cap right and uh, as i've told you differentiation of sine theta is cos theta so i'm going to get minus cos theta x cap because x cap for the time derivative is zero uh plus and it is constant so uh cos theta the differentiation is minus sine theta y cap times due to our chain rule or theta cap so we will get theta theta dot uh, theta dot times what is uh, I can take the minus sign outside times you will get cos theta x cap minus plus sine theta y cap. Now what is cos theta x cap plus sine theta y cap? It is our r cap vector. So this is nothing but minus theta dot r cap is our theta cap this is our second relation now since we know the math this was just math right and now we are going to move towards the actual physics of this plane for the coordinate system and what is that we are going to look into the velocity of a particle in polar coordinate system now our definition of velocity is not going to change it is just going to be dr upon dt okay what is r r if we can write like any other vector as its magnitude times the unit vector so we get now applying a chain rule a uh, sorry product rule we are going to apply product rule over here so we get r cap dr upon dt plus r dr cap upon dt now this is the term which was going to zero in our cartesian coordinate system but here we have seen that dr cap upon dt is not the case so dr upon dt i can write in its own notation as r dot r cap plus r times what is dr upon dt scroll so here we have dr upon dt is theta cap theta dot so we are just going to get r into theta dot theta cap right and this is our velocity in the polar coordinate system here the term r dot is known as the radial velocity because it is due to the change in the radius or the position vector of that particle 
and the r theta dot here theta dot is our angular velocity which is sometimes written as omega now we are going to look into angular velocity in a uh, greater detail when we look into our video series of rotational mechanics but for now you just have to know the terms right now r dot r theta dot is known as tangential velocity okay because it is uh, changing in the theta cap direction which is uh, if you draw a circle if we we had drawn a circle right over here so you can see that uh, the velocity of this body is uh, tangent to the circle right and uh, hence it, it is this velocity which is in the theta cap direction if this is in the r cap direction tangent to the circle is the theta cap direction so that is our tangential velocity now since we know the velocity in polar coordinate system the next topic that we are going to look is obviously the acceleration in the polar coordinate system so what is the definition of acceleration it is nothing but dv upon dt which we have looked into in our previous videos so we get d by dt of and v we have just found uh, it was equal to r dot r cap plus r theta dot theta right so what do we get again applying a product rule uh, over here we get first applying for product rule to the first term we get r double dot r cap plus r dot into r cap dot what is r cap dot r cap dot is where is it yes theta dot theta so r cap dot is theta dot theta cap plus how we are going to uh, apply product rule on this first we are going to keep theta dot theta cap constant and just differentiate r so we get a r dot plus then we are going to keep r and theta cap constant and we are going to differentiate theta dot so that we get theta double dot plus now we are going to keep r and theta dot constant and we are going to differentiate theta cap which is uh, what was the differentiation of theta cap it was minus theta dot r cap so we are going to get a minus theta dot r cap right so this would be equal to r double dot r cap plus you will see that these two terms are the same so you get 2r dot theta dot theta cap plus r theta double dot theta cap plus r this will be a minus sign r theta dot square r cap now taking the r cap and theta cap for terms so common we are going to get r double dot r theta dot squared r cap plus 2r dot theta dot plus r theta double dot theta cap okay so this is uh, this expression looks quite complicated but actually most of the terms will go to zero while we are solving our problems you are going to realize that okay so it depends upon the problem that which terms survive and which terms go to zero we are going to soon look into examples in our future video right so let's break this down what is r double dot this just like the radial velocity is our radial acceleration what is r theta dot squared this is our centripetal acceleration why centripetal because of this minus sign it is always directed see this will become minus r cap which means it is directed opposite to the direction of r cap so if this this is a circle 
and R cap is points radially outwards, then this acceleration points radially inwards, which is in the minus R cap direction. Right, that's why it always points towards the center of the circle everywhere. Right, if this is R cap, then centripetal acceleration will always point towards the center of the circle. Theta double dot is known as the R angular acceleration. Which again we are going to look into detail while do, uh, learning rotational mechanics. And uh, R theta double dot is R tangential acceleration. Again, because it is a tangent to the circle. And the last term, UR dot theta dot, is the most special term, which is our Coriolis acceleration. And why it is uh, so special? Because this term arises because our acceleration in polar coordinate system brings us into a non-inertial frame of reference and from my previous video what happens if you are in a non-inertial frame of reference yes you experience a pseudo force so this is a pseudo acceleration because you have moved into a non-inertial frame of reference See, if your particle is moving in a circle, although its speed might remain constant, which is its uh, magnitude of velocity might remain constant, but its direction, see, V is pointing in this direction, but here V is pointing in this direction. Here V will be pointing in this direction. Here V will be pointing in this direction. Right, so the direction of V is changing even if its magnitude, which is the speed, remains constant. And due to this behavior, some uh, in rotational motion being in a non-inertial frame becomes just unavoidable it is just unavoidable and hence you get pseudo forces like this pseudo accelerations known as so this coriolis acceleration gives rise to the very famous coriolis force now i'm going to uh, introduce you to this uh, into more detail in our entire completely different video series on just fictitious forces just on pseudo forces i'm going to release a video series and we are going to look into more detail uh, on this coriolis force in that video series so that's it guys in this video i wanted to explain to you the very famous uh, velocity and acceleration in a polar coordinate system and how it uh, how the it differs from our cartesian coordinate system and uh, how amazing this polar coordinate system is because uh, its unit vectors change in both space as well as time which makes it very special so i hope you enjoyed this video i will see you in the next one